Welcome to Relationship Marketing, Churches in Send Out Cards is our topic today. And before we start, I'm Sharon Grimm with Send Out Cards, the senior manager. I've been part of Send Out Cards for about five and a half years. And my co-host here is? I'm Carol Ward, and I have been a senior manager in Send Out Cards. I've been in Send Out Cards for exactly five years. This year was my anniversary. Yay! Yay. Very excited. It's an amazing company to be a part of, and I can't tell you how excited I am to have our guest today, Alan. And wow, you are going to hear quite the story about how she's been able to grow her church through send out cards and really spread the message of send out cards as well as the message of gratitude, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're going to go over send out cards and all the facets and opportunities within it. And then halfway through, Ellen's going to join us. So stay tuned and thank you for following us. Again, the information that we are going to hear, we are going to share with you today will change your life and potentially help grow your church if that's why you're listening. Um, Send Out Cards is making a positive impact on the world all over. And we are super excited to share it with you with our special guests. I'll let you take it. Yes, here. definitely. Uh, before we get too deep into this, I wanted to give you a little bit background about Send Out Cards and how it started. Our founder, Cody Bateman, back in 2003, wanted to take the offline environment of cards and gifts to an online click and order environment. And he did that in Salt Lake City, Utah, which is where our international headquarters is. And we're a member of the DSA. He wanted to do just like Amazon did for books, Netflix did for movies, and iTunes did for music. These three billion dollar companies, they have collapsed the inefficiencies in our marketplace. They have made our lives so much easier. Do you realize that Amazon is probably the number one go-to company for everything that people purchase? I know that they're at my house daily, and um, they're even here on the weekends now. Uh, <laughs> they are who I go to to find most of those items that I need to purchase, and I don't have the time to go out to the store. So they've changed how we do that. And Netflix, well, Netflix has actually um, changed the way that we watch TV shows, movies. They have created the term binge watching. It's a result of the way that people now watch their shows and movies. And iTunes, well, when's the last time that you actually went to a music store? I don't even know where they are. They have done so much for that industry to be able to quickly click on the, uh, on the um, app, download a track, and before you know it, you're listening. That's Pretty wonderful. sweet. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable stuff. Send Out Cards is doing the exact same thing in the greeting card and gifting industry. Today, from the comfort of your home or your office or on the beach, you can send a card, which is by going onto our app and clicking the send button. Send out cards will do their magic. They'll print it, stuff it, stamp it, and mail it. As soon as I learned that, that's when I was all in. It's <laughs> exactly what my problems was and why I couldn't get cards out. Absolutely, and that's why I got all in too because I <laughs> had a lot of those in my back seat that never got mailed because they were waiting to go to the post office. Well, just like send out cards has tried to um, automate and digitize the greeting card business. We have lived in this revolution of the digital age where the largest taxi company owns no taxis. Uber. And the largest telecom company owns no lines. Skype. The largest media owner creates no content. Facebook. Because you and I are definitely doing our share. Yeah. And I think that Ellen is too. Oh yeah. Uh, the largest movie house owns no cinemas. Netflix. The largest software vendor. They don't even create the apps. Apple and Google. Not at all. Well, no, I shouldn't say not at all. They do create a few, but the bulk of them are created elsewhere. And the soon-to-be largest greeting card and gift company has no stores. Send out cards. In fact, Send Out Cards is the best customer appreciation and customer retention program in the world. 
Send Out Cards has sent over 140 million greeting cards and 7 million gifts over the last 13 years. No other company sends more first class mail than Send Out Cards. Wow. That is just so cool. And these cards that she's talking about, they are so beautiful and customized, and you can do them right from your computer or mm. from your smartphone. That's and it doesn't matter if you have an iPhone or an Android. The app works great on both. So you can send a card from wherever you're at. Absolutely. And we prove that every day. Mm -hmm. So the way that we send cards is on demand immediately, right? Just like the rest of the world wants everything quick, easy, at your fingertips. Our smartphones and our tablets have become the way that we live. We do everything from them. We even do business. That's right. And our CEO, Cody Bateman, did a little bit of a survey on that. 80% of business follow-up falls into three categories. Thank you. It was nice to meet you. And celebrate the new possibilities of working together. With our first impression kit, that Carol's gonna show you in a minute, <laughs> um, you can set up a signature campaign that either comes in white or satin black. Whoops, it keeps on going back and forth, don't know why. But these two color campaigns, they have all those three categories and just at your fingertips, you can send one of these template cards right off to make that first impression a lasting impression. Absolutely. And I'm going to show you, seeing as it wants to jump right up here and stay on our screen, I'm going to show you how to make one of those cards so quickly. Absolutely. Down at the bottom of our screen, this is what the app looks like. And at the bottom of the app is two um, envelopes, and that's our campaigns. So those campaigns are where these are stored. We're going to go ahead and click on the white new possibilities. And as soon as we do, it pops right into our phone. And it's a beautiful card that just has that nice, simple look. We swipe to the left, and here's where we can start some real magic, where you can actually personalize this with a picture. Simply take one from your phone or take one on the fly and pop it right in there. It is automatically formatted for this card, and it is, it's just beautiful. So the next thing you want to do is swipe one more time to see the inside right. And here's where you can customize that message. We have put some words in there if you want to use them or do your own thing because this is your card, your way. One more thing that you want to do is swipe one more time and look at the back of the card. And this is your brand. So you can change this up again on the fly or you can have one that you have set up just for this campaign. And this is Cody's. We're going to leave it there and let it go. The last thing that we have to do is we have to select the person to send it to. So we're going to go right into our contacts, select LJ, click on it, and voila, we have the submit. And it tells you right there how many points it is and how much expense. Your points and expense, are you going to explain that? Yes. I'm All right. So we're going to submit that. And this is what shows up in your mailbox. Wow. What a lasting impression that's going to make. Don't you think? Absolutely gorgeous and so super mm. easy to do. So that card costs about $2. Really? So let's just go over the customer options. Okay. So our best plan is your preferred monthly package. It comes with 100 points a month, and that's 39 cents per point at $39 a month. And that's great for people that want to send seven or eight or more cards and gifts. Awesome for business people. We have a couple other plans. We have the retail um, plan. 980 a month or pay as you go, which the points just shift depending on more points you buy, the less you pay. And any of your subscriptions, you can pause at any point in time and the points roll month to month. And you can also buy more points at whatever your subscription rate is. Absolutely. So that's pretty sweet when you have those large campaigns come mm -hmm. up. So I'm going to tell you about some really cool bundles that we put together. And while we do that, just so that you can see it, sorry, we are floating around here. I'm just going to bring this to the bottom of our screen so it doesn't block everything out for you. And as you can see, we have put together three different bundles. The marketing bundle and the business bundle, both of those come with 
the first impressions campaign that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. That alone has a $249 value. Did you realize that? Amazing. So that's included in both of those bundles. And as you can see at the bottom of each bundle, the value of them is significantly more than what your cost is. Now, the business bundle has one unique feature that the rest of them don't. It has a multi-user account. So if you're a company that has um, a need for multiple users, we have the gift for you. It is amazing how it works. People can monitor or not, and it really gives your company that uniform look. The marketing bundle is where all of our tools are with the exception of that one multi-user account. So if you want to get started in your business or in your own personal profession, then the marketing bundle is the sweet spot. If you have um, budgetary issues, then please start with, a bit, with the personal bundle. And that is going to give you some of the tools to get started. And you can always upgrade to the other packages as you grow. So what do you think? I think it's awesome. That marketing bundle has by far the best value in my mind. <laughs> yeah, so, it really is sweet. As you're looking at this, you may be popping, people may be popping up into your head like, oh my gosh, so-and-so can use this and so-and-so. Mm. If that's happening, then you may want to take a look at becoming a distributor for an additional $50, which is phenomenal. You get everything you need to be able to share this business and earn money. And if you tack this distributorship on top of either a marketing bundle or a business bundle, you're going to get we're a hundred three hundred dollars worth of follow-up yeah. distributor follow-up campaign Crazy. pack which you're going to show on the next slide i believe right yes um so let's take a quick peek at that okay and this is this distributor follow-up campaign pack there's four touch campaign for customers as well as a four touch campaign for your team members your new distributors which is trickles over about a 10-day period and keeps in touch explains the system to them and as well as showing off the cards. Yeah. A great way to do it. So this is the, the one for your customers. Mm -hmm. And then a very similar look, but a different message for your distributors. Yeah. Who wants to stay there? All right. <laughs> so when we talk to people, there are four different um, categories that they generally fall into. You're one if you're a customer, and we absolutely adore customers. We... Um, wouldn't be in this business if we didn't have customers, and we love the, their questions too, don't we? Mm -hmm. um, you're two if you're a referral partner or you want a self-funding marketing plan, and if you want to know more about that self-funding, please give us a call or get back to the person that uh, sent you to this webinar. You're three if you want to earn money working part-time. Perhaps you have that nagging bill that is like maybe a student loan or something like that that you really want to just know that it's paid for every month then work this business part-time and make sure that that bill is just automatically paid for for you. You may be um, looking to replace your income full-time. We call that a number four. So get back to the person that came with you, that sent you here, and um, they'll help you select the one that's right for you. Absolutely. And I'm just going to go over how much money you would earn as you sell the bundles. So for, we're just going to focus on the marketing bundle first. For every marketing bundle that you sell, you would earn up to $335. And you also earn up to $195 for every marketing bundle sold in your downline to unlimited numbers. Now, double these bonuses on the business bundle and have them on the personal bundle. But that's not all. Those are one-time bonuses. Yes, those are. The other bonuses that we have are not bonuses there. Mission. Mm -hmm. And that would be what we call our residual income. This income is paid for all of that monthly activity that happens in your own organization and your downline. Everything that you personally sponsor, you would earn 20%. Nice. And as you share this with people, you're going to get other people like you that want to be a distributor. They're going to be a two, three, or four, just like we talked about. And so say that you sign up three people on your first level and each one of them sign up three people and they sign up three people before you know it, you have an organization that is giant. And if you go down seven levels doing that three, get three, get three, that's over 3,200 people. Wow. 
Now imagine the volume that they do, even if they're just doing the, um, the $39 a month, you're going to get 2% of everything that all of those people are doing. That's pretty sweet. So people ask all the time, what is your residual income? And it's so hard to judge that because you need to decide how big is your team going to be? Absolutely. So as Carol talked about earlier, just decide how you want to get started today as a customer, referral partner, part-time, or full-time replacing your current income. Just let the person know that sent you here. Beautiful. And that wraps up the first portion of our um, presentation today. This is um, all about a worldwide movement. We are poised for massive growth. There's millions that will experience send out cards over the next five years, few years, whatever. And we will be a worldwide household name. Absolutely. So join us today. And now I have the opportunity to introduce our guests coming on, Ellen Mars. And let me take a few minutes to read her background. Ellen is an, she's out in Gilbert, Arizona, by the way. She's an entrepreneur, a super mom in my eyes, a mom of seven who homeschools, a marathoner, um, a mentor to potential foster and adoptive families. She's the author of Lessons from the Finish Line, as well as in that she has her story of faith, passion, and perseverance because she actually ran 12 races in 12 months and she had never run before. How amazing is that? Ellen teaches individuals, businesses, and nonprofit organizations the importance of expressing gratitude through her network marketing business, as well as her class, Gratitude, The Missing Link. She was recently featured in New York Times Magazine. Woohoo! <laughs> Uh, in um, October of 2016, as well as Women Who Rock, a <laughs> contemplation of inspirational stories of success by extraordinary women. Ellen fuels her passion to help others and make a difference in the world by sharing the story with her abuse victims, um, with abuse, fellow abuse victims, foster children, and potential foster parents. As a motivational speaker, trainer, and mentor, she motivates and inspires others to overcome difficult circumstances, pursue their dreams, and achieve their goals. She relaxes by running, <laughs> going outside, and I know that she's training for the Boston Marathon. So that is it. Ellen, I'm going to let you take the stage. Thank you so much for joining us. Wow. Wow, that was an introduction. Thank you. Um, for just a second, I thought you said New York Times, and I, I was like, wow, I didn't know about that. I actually, that was networking <laughs> time. I was like, I thought, wow, no one told me that one. Uh, but hey, ladies, thank you so much. You guys know I adore you. You're like my New England sisters up there. And um, I'm excited to share just because uh, this is an area where I've had experience for quite a while now. I have worked in church ministry in some form or fashion. Uh, for the past 16 years. So I started off as a volunteer and then went to um, part-time staff and then full-time staff. And it's just been really cool to see how God has used this particular tool at our church to increase ministry, increase engagement with people, just be able to appreciate uh, the ones that serve. If anyone that listens to this is involved in the church, you know that the church cannot survive without our volunteers. And so we actually um, have kind of transitioned into using this a lot for appreciation and what have you. I will say, before I tell you about this particular card, I will say that our initial um, introduction to send out cards or what we initially thought about doing, our lead pastor uh, over our church came to me and said that he wanted to try it out for birthdays and anniversaries. And that was great. That was a great idea. But what we've seen is it's just expanded into so many different areas and so many ministries. Uh, the very first card I ever sent just to try out send out cards was a thank you card to a 17 year old boy in our congregation who was just volunteering everywhere. And about three days later, I got a call from his mother saying, you know, I have to know what it is, how you did this, because my 17 year old son is running around the house with a greeting card. And he was so excited that that we just thought of him. And so that's what kind of started our journey. And when I see that one, two, three and four, where you talk about customer referral partner, part time, full time. That was my journey with send out cards started out with um, as a customer 
And so now what I get to do is help our church continue to just build relationships because we have a particular class at our church called Start Here. And so if anyone's listening and you have an intro class where the new people come in the door and you put them into a particular environment, ours is called Start Here. And what I did a couple of years ago was I started kind of taking a poll of the people who signed up for that class because it helped me to know why it was that they came to that class in particular. Uh, were they coming to grow in their faith? Were they coming to connect to a community group? Were they coming to find out where to serve? Were they even coming to find out what it meant to be a part of a church? And there were all these different areas. So we just asked people to indicate that. And what we found over just a, a survey of just a, about two years at that time was over 90% of the people came to the church seeking relationship of some sort, not like a dating relationship, but a connection. Uh, they were looking to engage in small groups. They wanted to find people that had uh, similar circumstances. They, they needed connection because we have all of this social media challenges or uh, channels that we can utilize to connect, but people want to connect on a deeper level. And we found that over time with send out cards, we can connect in different ways and keep people engaged. And so this first slide that you're seeing is, uh, was a really cool project. I actually, um, on Good Friday and Easter Sunday uh, last year, I asked our uh, pastors and staff to give me a list of all the volunteers who signed up to work either on Good Friday or Easter Sunday. Because if you're involved in a church, ours is a Christian church. And again, you may be watching this from a different um, congregational or denomination, but you'll understand the value of volunteers where, so for example, Easter is like what we call the Super Bowl. That's when people are at church. That's when our church is just packed to the brim with people. And so I took my cell phone and this list of all the volunteers, and I just made a point of taking a picture of all the volunteers, every single volunteer that was on that list in action that day. And we popped them onto the front of a card and sent out a thank you from all of the church staff. And this just happens to be one couple who were serving at the door as greeters. When you send someone a thank you card, it's, it's, so I remember one of the first staff meetings when our, our lead pastor asked us to try send out cards, he said this, he said, it's one thing to be grateful. It's an entirely different level to express your gratitude. So to take it that one step further, because I don't think many people would say I'm ungrateful, right? But do you take the extra step to show your gratitude? And so this was one of those ways that we took an extra step and we sent out uh, over 300 cards to the volunteers that were there. And I still, I can go to some of these people's houses and these cards are on their fridge, they're on their desk, they're on their bookshelf. So that's just one, one way that you can use it. You wanna go to the next one and we will. So the next one is a way that we have found, we can send invitations out to classes, to um, our small group leaders. This was a, this, these cards are actual cards that we've done. Um, and this just gives you an idea of a way that you can appreciate your small group leaders. So those people that are actually, um, they're in the trenches, right? You only get so much connection on a Sunday morning, like our service is being 75 minutes. You're mostly engaging with whoever's on the stage. It's hard to engage with the person next to you if you're in the service. And so we hold small groups at a very high uh, value in our church because as your church grows, you still have to make it a small church environment with these small groups. So this was an invitation for our leaders to come. One, we wanted to celebrate them. We wanted to launch really well that year for our small groups and we invited them to a dinner. But I wanna point out on this particular card, what our pastor, what we did was we actually made it so easy uh, for them to RSVP. If you look on that card, there's a QR code that's right there um, in the top fold of the card. So we actually gave them an even easier way to RSVP. They didn't have to call, they didn't have to email, they didn't have to go on and find a form. They literally scanned that code with their phone and then they were able to RSVP right from their phone. And that was huge. We got a much higher rate of RSVPs just for this event because we made it one step easier for them. Very cool. Yeah. Then the next one, we actually also found that uh, when we have classes and we know in advance, and you can see again, we have the, the QR code on this one. This is a class that I teach called Gratitude the Missing Link. And this is a, at the time when we taught it there in person, it's a six week course. And we talk about what we can learn from scripture and how we can appreciate people in four different areas of, of our life, which we at our church call the wheel. And this class again was 
we had great response from the RSVPs. We actually had people register straight from this QR code. Um, we also were able to see how many of them engaged at that time. It was one of the highest, um, outside of like membership and those kind of classes, this is one of the highest registered classes. And it, it ended with a very high attendance rate too. It was a great class and we literally used send out cards and regular cards. If people didn't have a send out cards account, we provided some regular cards and this class, once we were finished with the teaching segment, we then issued a challenge to the students in the class to send out seven cards that week that were um, centered on whichever spoke of the wheel. So one of those is love family. So they would choose seven people from their family, whatever they designate as their family, and they would send a card a day through this uh, class. And it was, it was a great class and we had great follow-up from this card and we were able to do a thank you from that also later. Cool. Ellen, I just got to say, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, were they there? Yes. Uh, it's so funny. When I first started working with them, it was just uh, Matthew and Luke. I know people have seen this card before and said, do you really have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John working there? And at that time, that was our first four pastors. We started out with just Luke, Matthew, and myself. And then along came um, John and Mark. And then we kind of joke with Dale and Josh, we're like trying to figure out how we can you know, <laughs> spice them up a little bit. But yes, we did. And they would laugh because when I would send an email, I would always send it Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because I knew I could remember them in that order. <laughs> and the four gospels. <laughs> yeah. And they're still there. <laughs> and then this is actually the card that I mentioned was a gratitude card after I, I took that offline class of six weeks. And just recently, earlier this year, um, took it for a run as an online class. And so this was actually a card that we sent out to all the people to thank them for being a part of that class. So you can use it to bookend an experience. So I mentioned the Start Here class. We actually, at the end of that class, we would take a picture of the entire class and put it on the inside of a card. And that kind of commemorates their start with our church and kind of like their class. You know, when you graduate from school or something, you graduate with a class and you have a connection with those people. So our Start Here class has that. With the gratitude class, we started with an invitation and we ended with an appreciation and that bookend this experience to where it's been so far, it's been a great experience for the people that have been in the classes, either offline or online. Now this one, I actually created this, um, I, you know, a lot of times church staff, you would think, you know, you're in a church, everything's sunshine and roses. It's not. So that ministry is hard, especially in the times that we live in now. There's so much that people come to the churches for a connection, engagement, but also sometimes they're just looking for hope and they, you know, they're carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders and they come and the staff at a church needs to be honored. They need to be uh, thought of because they're constantly thinking of how they can pour into other people's lives. This was actually a staff retreat that we went on as a staff. This was our staff team at that time. And I didn't put any, there's no letter, no message, no nothing. It was just okay, I have the pictures, I wanna share them, I put them on a card, and I still look at this card to this day, and I can just remember all the conversations and discussions that we had, and it just means something when you, again, are part of a group, and especially with staff. Sometimes they carry a lot of stress and tension and burdens of the congregation, and it's nice to be able to say, we got to honor you and spend time together. And now we have great stories behind these pictures. So if you are watching this and you're involved in the church, don't forget your church staff. Remember that they also need to be appreciated and recognized. This one is a great card. I love this. And I grew up uh, in the South. And when I was baptized, I got a baptism certificate. I don't know if you guys have, I don't, it depends on where you're from and what church you're with, but we got a baptism certificate and it just had your name on it, which was great. Totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. But imagine having a picture of you coming up out of the water of the baptism. Um, this is a huge deal in my opinion, because it, the pictures remind you of exactly what happened that day, what was said. And this is a friend of mine that came to our church and we took his baptism picture. Actually, all of the people who were baptized this day, it was Easter. And we, we actually did this for all of the people who were baptized that day. But, and it was a cell phone picture. I think we also had a photographer that took some, but like most of these I took with my cell phone. And we're just able to personalize his baptism certificate, if you call it that, and then include some pictures of people who were key in his life at that time, which you can't replace that with anything. Oh, so a couple of things before you do the Q&A, I just want to mention just a couple of things because we now recently have uh, started an additional ministry at our church that I don't know. Some people have these, some people don't. Um, but earlier this year, our pastor of care and compassion came to me and we actually 
uh, he had wanted to start this ministry previously, but we decided that we wanted to start a cards of encouragement ministry at our church. Now we unofficially already had that with all the gratitude cards and things we were sending out, but we receive, and most churches have some way for people to convey prayer requests. And we have that at our church. And, um, when prayer requests come in on Sunday, we have a team that prays for those people and that's fantastic. But now what we have done is we've added an extension to our prayer team. And those of us that are in this ministry now, we commit to praying for the prayer request that's submitted, but then we sit down and we send a card to the person who requested prayer. And it has been just an amazing ministry. The, the pastor, when we met, he said, I want to take the culture of prayer to a new level in our church. I want people to know that their prayers are being, uh, when they ask for prayer, that it's being done. And then we can talk to them down the road through cards or through engagement and phone, what have you. But what the cards do is gives them something tangible to hold on to, to say, yes, I'm being prayed for and somebody cared enough to let me know. And I actually now, um, as I was sitting here earlier, I received two texts from people that we've sent cards to in the last two weeks, just sending me an update on their prayer request. So now there's even more discussion. And that's kind of, if, if you're part of a church that values prayer, obviously there's no greater gift to know that more people are talking to the Lord and asking for these prayer requests to be answered. So wanted to make sure that I put that in there because um, that is a key part of what we do now with send out cards. It's, we, have, we have ministries, our kids' ministries, students use it, our small groups team uses it. We have an all church um, account where anybody that's on staff can go and send some but now we have this specific ministry and a lot of people do have a cards ministry at their church, but unfortunately those volunteers are worn out because they're handwriting them and they're going and buying stamps. And when I talk to those people, they basically say, we would love to have this because it's exhausting to have to write them off. They can type a lot faster um, than if they have to write them all and then do the addressing and the stamping and all of those things. So, if you're watching this and you're with a church and you value those card ministry volunteers, uh, I would say give some out cards a try only because it just saves them so much time and energy that they can pour into more people, obviously. So wonderful. Awesome. Um, I have just more accolades than anything than questions, but um, I have to say the photo, the photos of the, the folks or the church members, volunteers in action to capture their moment is just huge. Yeah. I mean, that's just got to be so what a nice memento and, and for them to just really feel involved and um, feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. And, and, and I think just hearing how we're doing the prayer requests and that really must deepen their faith and their connection. And again, not feeling alone in their time of need. Um, and that's just a human, human need that you're fulfilling there. And it's just amazing. Do you feel, um, what would your feedback be? Were you with the church before they used send out cards versus after? Yeah, How so I, feel the changes are. Yeah, so we actually initially, uh, I've been in this particular church for 16 years and I've been with two different congregations, but within the same church. And um, we've been using send out cards for the last six of that. And I actually was the person many moons ago, probably 14 years ago, who introduced the e-newsletter. And the e-newsletter was the big thing back then, but now most people know that e-newsletters for anything are pretty much white noise. And yeah. if you look at like the open exchange, the open rate for an e-newsletter, even a church open rate, they're very, very low. People just, uh, I guess e-newsletters come in as... Um, just more work, right? But greeting cards, greeting cards, the actual standard greeting card size, these cards are actually opened 100% of the time because when you get a greeting card, you wanna know what's the greeting card say. And so that is, uh, has been a huge connector is when there's people who um, have been kind of, they've just kind of put off by an e-newsletter. You can't personally connect with each person on that. It's great for distributing information that people wanna find. Um, but when you want to connect to people, you have to somehow make it personal. And that's what we do with these cards. And I will say, um, because I work with the Start Here class, and I'm pretty bold with just, I like to know why people do what they do. If we have someone come to our church from another church, or even if someone leaves our church, that, I mean, that just happens. That's natural. Um, I have no problem asking them, why is it that you left? Why did you change churches? Why did you come to our church? And moreover than not, it's always those, I shouldn't say always, it, more than not, most of the time, it's because of a perceived indifference that they felt. 
So they felt like they weren't appreciated for all the volunteer time that they gave. They felt that they weren't connected because their church got too big. And what we can do with these cards is actually remind people they're appreciated, they're engaged, they're part of the family. And that's how we've seen, at least from my vantage point in the church, we've seen how this actually, we call it making people stick, you know, stick to ministry. They're not as quick to leave when they know that you value them and you don't just flippantly send out a mass email that says, we appreciate you. I know our kids pastor is working on um, all the appreciation cards for our VBS, which is a huge endeavor. But those people come back each year and they love it and they're engaged and they feel like they own the ministry. That is awesome. Thank you so much. I think we're going to have to yeah. wrap it up. Yep. Um, Unfortunately. We're going over on time, but. Um, could, you, uh, could you at least mention one thing? I do have a video out there with more examples that is on the YouTube channel called Church Ministry and Send Out Cards. And I'll give them more ideas. Wonderful. Yes, yes. yes. And actually, Ellen, if you can just text that to us, we'll add that to the YouTube description yes. so that Got people it. can find out more. Sure. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us today. And if you're watching on YouTube on the replay, thank you so much. And on September 21st out in New England in Marlboro, Mass, we have a phenomenal event. Um, those of you are welcome to join us. And I think the link is right here. Yes. And it's on Eventbrite. And we have Ivan Meisner is our feature presenter, as well as Jordan Adler and Steve Schultz. And down there is the link. So, so thank you awesome. so much, Ellen. <laughs> that was fabulous. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And I, so many people on the call. I just wish I could answer all of your chat right now. But thank you so much. And we will uh, talk to you soon. Thanks. Thank you.